there's two sets of considerations here that I think are really important. The first is what is theoretically the correct way to model this based on what the role of those contractors or freelancers are and what the arrangement is with the agency. And then there is a second set of considerations, which is how operationally feasible is it to model them in that way? So let's start with the first set, which is how do we determine theoretically the correct way to model that? Well, the first question we want to ask is what kind of work is that contractor or freelancer doing? Are they doing work that is core to the business and they're essentially providing flexibility to our internal capacity? So if we have a team of designers, but we have some freelance designers that are used to create flexibility in our core capacity, then probably that that first question is, okay, well, there's a case for making that a delivery cost, actually. Hmm. Then the second question is, what is the contract model with that freelancer? And the key thing here is, does this person need to be utilized? Because they could be a contractor or a 1099 from a contractual basis, but we're still paying them a fixed amount of money for a fixed amount of time, regardless of how much client work there is to do. And I've seen a lot of agencies have those kind of relationships with freelancers. I pay you $4,000 a month and I get about 10 hours a week of your time, for example. And so if I'm not keeping you busy, I'm still like, you're basically an employee. From a modeling perspective, you're you're the same as an employee. It's just contractually you're not. So yeah. let's not get caught up in the semantics of are they a 1099 or are they an employee? What is the nature of our relationship with them is an important consideration. And if they need to be utilized, there's a, again a strong case for them to be a delivery, treated as a delivery person. The next thing that we want to consider, and this gets into operational feasibility, is can we get time tracking data for this person? Mm-hmm. And this gets into trying to understand all of the downstream implications of this. But if we're going to consider somebody a delivery expense, then we need to be able to estimate their time on the project, which means we then need to account for it after the fact, if we're going to properly measure our average billable rate, the profitability of that project, our utilization rate. So that's where sometimes we'll have contractors and freelancers that really should technically be modeled as a delivery expense, not a pass through expense. But because of the nature of relationship with them, we can't really get them to track time. And so in that case, it makes more sense to treat them as pass through. And that's where we might do something on the profit and loss statement, like split out our chart of accounts in a little bit more of a granular way so that we can spot, you know, how much are we spending on design freelancers? And that still gives us the ability to have this insight into when does it make sense for us to start to hire more of that in-house and move some of the pass through or cogs to AGI.